playing gold at the highest level that he can possibly reach. And he's only got two losses on his record, one of them being to a very hard-hitting featherweight in Harley Locklear, a guy that we just saw win the fight of the year last year. Absolute incredible performance. There is Diego De Jesus. I made sure I asked him about the pronunciation of his last name just because I'm a stickler for that type of thing. So I don't care. Call it whatever you want. This is just a guy that looks like he just wants to show up, get violent. That's it. Very, very calm, very polite. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because mixed martial arts today has kind of become like Fight Club in the sense that anybody can do it. You know, back when, when it originally came on the scene in New York, you were only fighting if you were kind of a roughneck, if you had a martial arts background, if you were a thug in the street. You know, you were the only, those were the only people fighting. Now we've got engineers, school teachers, daycare teachers. Yeah, the Bantamweight got... champ who will fight the winner of this fight, Ryan Hickey, is a doctorate. Can't. So, have you ever seen the movie Paul? No. No, it's a little alien play. Watch that movie, that's Keith Nash. You'll remember that someday. Headstrong is Nathaniel Grubham walking out to, in my opinion, one of the worst bands in history, Trapped. And again, coming out of Apex Combat Sports, another great school. Yeah, we saw the work that these guys were able to put in, man. Joe Nelson coming out here looking absolutely incredible. And all their athletes are always calm. Their coaches are calm. They're never missing mouthpieces. No, they're, they're just, they're class acts. The Ducks are in a row, and they really seem to care a lot about the mental preparation. You couldn't break these guys if you tried. Fired up cornerman, calm fighter. Now, for those of the, the fans at home that might not know what the Vaseline does, Will, because you're a combat sports veteran yourself, explain that. Well, you know, the Vaseline is there because we want to avoid any unnecessary cuts and incidental headbutt cuts, that sort of a thing. So they tend to put Vaseline around the bony prominent structures of the eye. You know, back in the day, coaches used to try to, like, lather their guys and bodies in it so that they'd slide off. GSP's grease skate. Now these sanctioned bodies pretty much say, you know, you have to do it like a raccoon. Pretty much just around the eyes and the nose. So your cheekbones, uh, your eyebrows, the bridge of your nose. Those areas that are prone to be cut. Nathaniel Grubham is one of those guys that really is as game as they come. Look at the look on his face right now. This is a guy who's here for business. There's well, a lot and, of fighters and they're, and they're here for a title, a USMTA title. And like most guys take this as an opportunity to party. This guy is, this is a business trip. This is a guy that's gonna transition really well into the pro platforms. As our shenanigans girls leave the cage, we're gonna bring it up to our ring announcer, Mike Falvo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our first championship fight of the evening. This championship fight is for the USMTA Bantamweight Championship. It is brought to you by Cage Wars MMA and Sponsor, by County Waste and Recycling, Metajules, UA Local Number 7 Plumbers and Steam Fitters, Sticker Mule, Bricklayers Local Number 2, Allied Craft Workers, Shenanigans Gentlemen's Club, Ryan Clark Realty against the cage with Ben and Jay. And also we want to mention again our friends from Mission Accomplished joining us at cage side. The judges for our first championship fight of the evening. Mr. John Bernard, Rob Exisa, and Mike Walter. The fight doctor at cage side, Dr. Michael Sheridan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this fight is also sanctioned by the United States Muay Thai Association Executive Director Ed Kinner is in attendance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live around the world on Stimulus.com, it's championship fight time. Let's do this! Introducing first, fighting out of the
the blue corner. He weighed in yesterday 135.2 pounds. Representing AST Mixed Martial Arts out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Diego De And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in yesterday 135 pounds even. Representing Apex Combat Sports out of Johnson City, New York. Nate Grubbum! And the man in charge of the action at the sound of the bell is Dan Mergliotta. All right, here we go. Our first championship fight. Big Dan Mergliotta, the third man in the cage. Diego De Jesus in the blue. Nathaniel Grubbum in the red. Touch your gloves here. This fight is underway. The first of a four title fights to finish off this Cage Wars 50 card. Oh, Ooh, nice kick by Grubbum. Nathaniel's corner telling him to just back off the cage there. Looks like success so far. And that's that's smart instruction because, you know, De Jesus was, you know, cornering him. He was stalking him. Wow. <coughs> Swinging hard with that left hand out of the clinch there. That's one thing I've noticed about Nathaniel Grubham is he's gotten a lot better about making sure when he breaks out of that clinch, he does it with something thunderous. Yeah. Nice takedown by Diego. He's up against the cage. Grub him back up to the feet. Nice job, creating separation. Diego smiling in there. Big, big eyes, wide open. He's having fun, tongue out. Where Nathaniel's a little bit more stoic. He's a little bit more just in the moment. That's what I was saying. Diego just like, the, <laughs> the, what's inside the book doesn't match the cover. You know, Diego trying to use the angles, trying to use oh! this nice right hand. We've seen Nathaniel Grubham hurt in fights before. Finished by Harley Locklear. It looks like that one hurt him, and he's still holding on to that leg. Now, if you notice, so he kicked it on the way by, so at least he wasn't just holding on. He's, he's again, aware of the situation. He knew he wasn't going to get the takedown, so he's not going to let him out of it either. Try to make not something. much, but it's something. Yeah, still make something happen. Show something yes. to the judges. Show some aggression. It looks like he's starting to go after that left arm of Diego. Try to bring him down. Very good work by careful, Diego. Though, not to get shook off. Yeah, very good work though by Diego to not grab the fence like we've seen a few times here this evening. Both these guys come from very high level schools. You know, they're prepared very well. Oh, oh nice like, by Nathaniel Grubham. He's got that leg trapped. Looks like that is getting tight. He doesn't have the right angle for the choke. If he can regain that leg, he'll be fine. Very and now, conversely, how much energy is Grubbin spending? Ooh, he got clipped there. He doesn't look like he's breathing heavy, so if I had to answer your question, I'd probably assume not much. You Just know, about Nathaniel's doing a nice job keeping his guard high for the most part, except for right there, of course, as I say it. Shooting in beautifully timed there by Nathaniel Grubham as he takes him, gets him down. The problem is finishing the takedowns against Diego, though. Diego's doing a nice job defending the transition. He's out. taking the back here with just a few seconds left. Once again, not going to be able to do anything with it, but it shows the judges something. And if you're one of the judges, what do you, how do you score this? I give that round to Diego. Uh, you know, a little bit looser in the striking. He was moving more, more pressure. He did hurt him in what, at, at one point. He was in control out when he were on the ground. We're gonna look for a replay here. So again, Diego doing a nice job with that right hand. He caught the right leg of Nathaniel, pulled him down. Nathan goes for that single leg, but again, you look at the awareness right now of Diego. He stays on top. He keeps his balance. He, he's able to regain his, his position. And we talk about that, that cage work. Even though his back ended up against the cage, Nathaniel was not able to suck him in to complete that takedown. Both corners here in between rounds seem to be very calm, but as you said, it's only the end of the first round. No reason to fret now. Nobody was in serious trouble. And it wasn't a dominant round. It was just one, in my opinion, from what I saw, 
by Diego. But it wasn't like a 10-8 round. He wasn't hurt. Big Dan asking if they're ready. Here we go for round two. Bring it out, touching the center. One of the nicest people you'll ever meet in Diego De Jesus as he eats a big shot there. Nathaniel Grubb. Oh! What a shot by Diego De Jesus! Nathaniel seems to have recovered. No, he's still kind of wobbling a little bit. Maybe a shot there out of desperation. Now, if you notice, Nathaniel got his back against the cage again. Exactly what his coaches have been telling him not to do. He needs to do something to get Diego's respect in the striking here. And I don't think shooting for takedowns is going to do that. I think he's got to try to rock him with something like that. How was that for timing? I would like timing? to see him put the punches and the kicks together, though. Because Diego is a little bit loose in his striking style, so there is openings. He's looking for that check hook. Look Diego at this says, kid. bring it to the center. <laughs> this kid center. is something else, I swear to God. You know, at this point, Diego doesn't even want to chase him in the cage. He says, come on out. Wow, play. he's go. slick. Nice calf kick, slip. You know, he sees Nathan coming with the kicks. He's got to set it up. He's got to throw something in his face. So far, so good, though, in this fight if you're Diego De Jesus. Now, watch how low Nathan's left hand's getting. Yes, Diego he drops sees him. that. Diego it's, sees that. It seems like every time he throws a punch, those, or any strike, those hands drop, and then he catches himself and says, I need to bring those back up. Especially that left one, though. Let's see if Diego can take advantage of that. Coming up on the one minute mark. Again, so far, it's, it's been a dominant performance uh, for Diego De Jesus. There we go. He's trying to get something going here. Excellent takedown defense by Diego. And this kid just seems so well-rounded. Using a nice, do a nice job using his head against Nathan, so he can create some distance, strike. He was holding the cage there. Dan told him to let it go. I don't know if you guys caught that at home. See, Diego's looking for that overhand right. You see him dropping the head to the left and throwing that Ooh. right hand over. Nathaniel may have hurt him here. Starting to tee off. Anything can happen, folks. That's why this sport is the greatest on earth. Maybe an accidental clash of heads there as they came together. Not exactly sure what happened. This has to give Nathan confidence. Able to get the dominant position this here. This is the first time he's had... Diego in a, in a weak position like this. And he steps over, traps that arm, but, you know, just a few seconds left, so what can you really do with this? Well, again, it's not necessarily maybe what can you do, but was that enough to maybe sway the judges? Yeah, recency that? bias, man. It's the last thing they see at the end exactly. of the round. Yeah. That kid's got some fucking eye. All right, we got a replay coming here, Will. Let's see what they've got for us. Probably that knockdown. That overhand by Nathan. Diego doing a good oh. job with that right hand, right? He says, oh, look at me. But again, Diego's got that loose striking style that kind of came to bite him in the, at the end of the second round. Well, we could be seeing the turning of the tide. Are we looking at a situation though where Nathaniel Grubham needs a finish if he wants that title? Because we see two rounds where we see De Jesus able to drop him. So we could be looking at a situation for Nathaniel Grubham where he needs a finish if, if he I'm wants If I'm in his corner, I'm telling him to finish it this round. You never want to leave it to the judges anyway, but especially the way that that second, or the first and second round went. And this is for the USMGA title. As far as I know, the winner of this fight's Ryan Hickey in March or the end of April, so. Here we go, final round. Now, Diego doing more of that punching and running away, you know, that's gotta again give Nathan some confidence. Stick and move. No, but not in a good way. 
He didn't do that in the first round. He's running and then kind of running away. He's hit and run away. Why would you assume that it, that is, Will? You're kind of a I, mastermind here. I really think that, you know, he might be getting a little bit tired. I think that it's catching up to him, and Nathan's starting to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Uh, if Nathaniel Grubham can start to pound away here in this situation that he's in, he might be able to get that finish. We've seen that he has the power in his hands and the ability to end fights. Now, what I'd like to see Nathaniel do is start kneeing those thighs. You know, when he's got him against the cage, knee the thigh, knee the thigh, and then take him down. You know, beat him up a little bit so he can't move as well. And I was just going to ask you if you could explain to the fans at home what kneeing the thighs will do. The knee to the thigh is going to make it harder for that other athlete to move. It kind of gives him muscle cramps, fatigue, uh, general discomfort. It hurts your mobility and, and agility. Grubham taking the back here. Let's see what De Jesus decides to do. He's awful low, though, on the back. So he's either got to work his way up and get his, his hooks in, body triangle, get a neck. Oh, is he biting or... the glove? No. There he goes. He's working his way up. Good job by Nathaniel. Looks like he's got that one trying to work his way in there to get under the chin. And this is tiring. Even though he's standing against Cage, he's still carrying oh, weight. Oh, boy. He's not under the chin yet. He's not under the chin no, yet. No, but we've seen guys tap from that pressure. He goes down to the mat. And he's tired. We have one minute and 15 seconds left. The question is, can he get that elbow under the chin before Diego Hastings turns to his right? This could be the greatest comeback on this card if Nathaniel Grubham's able to get the tap here, folks. Got a body triangle. Nathaniel's got, got the got body the, triangle. He's got that hand in there. He's out. All right, good for him, but Nathaniel Grubham's going to go right back to work trying to take that neck. Less than a minute. Let's see if he can finish this. If not, I hate to be the judges. Especially with how round two ended. You know, we mentioned that. This round appearing to be all Nathaniel Grubham. Like you said, it seems like De Jesus is kind of starting to tire out. And, and Nathaniel's gaining confidence and finding out what moves to make in the right time. Really starting to figure out the timing of De Jesus, really after about the midway point of the fight. And that's what I love to see these is the athletes that are, are, are able to adapt in the fight. And that's those Apex guys, man. They are just. There's something else going on over there. I don't know if there's something in the water in that facility or what, but these guys just seem to have a fight IQ on a different level. Proper preparation prevents poor performance, and those folks properly prepare. All right, my friend. Well, let's see how the judges scored this one. Uh, as you guys notice, Jay Engelston not here in the booth with us. He is going to be cornering Matt Boyce in the next fight. Man, how do you score this fight? I don't. I give it a 29-28 day. Hey, yeah, Diego, in my opinion. But again, you never know what a judge, you talk about the recency bias, we don't know if that's going to play a factor. Exactly. Well, I will see you in a moment. Yes, sir. All right, while Ben leaves uh, leaves the commentating booth, I am left here by myself. We're looking at Diego Jesus, De Jesus in the blue there. Again, a little bit of uncertainty in his eyes. He looks like he feels confident, but... Uh, the fight definitely started better than it ended for him. We've got our beautiful shenanigans girls in the ring with the USMTA title and uh, Cage Wars president Tim Rankins. So right now in the corner, the USMTA basically has to compile these scores to make sure that <clears throat> the official uh, announcement is, is clear because we have had in the past in this promotion and every promotion where, you know, it's been messed up and, yeah, messed up in announcing the winner, and then it's just a major headache. You know, even if the other person ends up getting the win on their record, it's just, it's a messy thing. So the USMTA likes to take their time, make sure all the scorecards are compiled correctly so there's no issues after the fight. Nathaniel Grubham looks no worse for the wear. A little bit of blood on his arm, but that's Diego's. Very impressed with the way he progressed through that fight, making the necessary changes as he went. Crowd eager, eagerly awaiting. Tommy Marcelino, Tim Rankin's over there with the executive director of the USMTA, Ed Kinner, trying to figure it all out.
All right, folks, while we're waiting, we did mention Cage Wars 51. Tickets are on sale now. www.cagewarsmma.com. Right here at Rivers Casino and Resort, the most beautiful venue that uh, Cage Wars has ever partnered with. These athletes and these fans are lucky, as are we as, as uh, Cage Wars employees. Rivers Casino does an amazing job in terms of operations and client satisfaction. I'm grateful to have them as a partner to Cage Wars. Ed Kinner speaking with Mike Falvo, a little powwow here. Big Dan confirming. Big Dan calls him to the center. Here we go, folks. Who is the new 135-pound USMTA title holder? Will it be Nathaniel Grubham in the red corner or Diego de Jesus in the blue? And now, ladies and gentlemen, after three hard-fought rounds, we go to the official scorecard. Judge Jonathan Bernard scores the fight 29-28 in favor of the blue corner. Judge Mike Walter scores the fight 29-28 in favor of the red corner. Oh boy, and Judge decision. Rob Axisa scores the fight 28 28. Oh. We have a draw. Wow. That's not going to make the crowd happy, but that's the part of judging. You never want to let it go to the crowd or let it go to the judge.